So, hi, um, I'm Jane Coombe and I'm the National Programme Director at the Black Sash, which means I have the privilege of working with all our provincial directors, with our provincial teams, mostly of paralegals, as well as our advocacy unit, and try to work a way to get the provincial and national work of the Black Sash to really mutually reinforce each other so that the work we do at national level speaks to the ground and the work we do at the ground speaks to national level as well as of course municipal, provincial, all the layers in between. I think um, Marcella would have ta talked to you about our different strategies of work uh, where we give advice work, we do monitoring, uh, we do a lot of rights education and then we advocate for change and I think what's interesting is, is the, the areas where we focus those different strategies. Um, historically, the Black Sash has worked in the area of social security, broadly, that includes social assistance, which are the kind of social grants programs that South Africa has put in place, really as poverty alleviation mechanisms. So the child support grant, where we've just won a big victory, but also the old age pension, disability grant, and so on. Um, but also there are private social security mechanisms, such as unemployment insurance, or compensation for occupational injury, and private pensions. And it's really important that those um, private provisions are properly regulated because, in fact, they're not very well and effectively regulated at the moment. And particularly people who um, are on the fringe of the employment scale tend to be disadvantaged very badly. So that's one big area of our work is social security. But we also work to make sure that um, basic services are provided in municipal settings so people have water, they have electricity, they have housing, sanitation, other very, very fundamental needs for dignity, for people's basic human rights, and also to ensure things like the right to health. Um, and that delivery happens at a municipal level most often, sometimes there's some provincial competencies, but it is governed by national frameworks and of course national budgeting streams. So you know that, that is really interesting from the local level right up to the national level. And we're very concerned with the breakdown in service delivery there. And uh, I think our monitoring project is picking up a, a number of, of issues there. Um, and um, then we are concerned that within the economic system, I suppose, that both issues of microeconomics, so that would be debt and credit, how people access credit, to what extent they get stuck in debt cycles, and particularly how poor people get stuck in debt cycles, um, and whether there's a fair consumer environment which doesn't trap people further in cycles of poverty. That's an area that we that we worked and we were very instrumental in setting up together with a number of players, the National Credit Act, which really has held together some form of fair environment, um, just in fact as the recession struck. And then lastly, and, and very important for us, is one can intervene with a whole lot of state regulation and state intervention into poverty. But um, whatever support one does, whatever, uh, whatever structures one puts in place, it's absolutely crucial that people are enabled to get into the job market and if not into the formal job market that they are enabled to, to uh, provide livelihoods which are dignified and decent for themselves. So economic policy, uh, job creation policy, training and so on is also an area of, of work for us. So as you can see all those areas whether it's social security, social protection, debt and credit or economic development and the, and the right to work and livelihoods all really tries to speak to the issue of poverty and inequality. South Africa has a huge and unacceptable number of people who are living um, extremely poorly. The most recent household survey says that one in five households are simply not sufficiently nourished. So we're talking about a very, very basic right to food, households who are not able to eat. Um, and we also have one of the very, very highest um, inequality rates in the world. So it is a wealthy country. Uh, pe we have people here who are extremely wealthy and yet we have people who are living in, in abject poverty. And so the Black Sash really wants to come in and look at that from a human rights framework and to see that that is not um, in any sense acceptable and we believe it's something we can change. Um, perhaps just to, to illustrate with, with some work which, which I think uh, Cordaid has been particularly supportive uh, to the Black Sash in trying to develop and that was where we, we noticed in our casework, when we were seeing people coming into our offices day after day, particularly in KwaZulu-Natal, which, as you probably know, is a very, very high HIV-AIDS um, infection rate, uh, we noticed that many of the clients who were coming to us 
had appealed when they had been um, refused with a disability grant. They'd appealed to say, no, they really believe they are needing a disability grant. They were certainly, they certainly are extremely poor. So they passed the means test, which is set, and they are disabled through the, uh, through the illnesses that they have or, or the other disabilities that they're carrying. Um, the problem has been that their right to an appeal has really been congested administratively, so that for years they've been sitting and awaiting an appeal. If you can just imagine the consequence for a poor household who had an expectation of some form of relief, some form of income support, and just not knowing year after year as to whether that right would be uh, fulfilled. Um, we, have, we have really tried to take this up in every administrative corner from provincial levels, working with officials, working with with the uh, political um, heads, working right up to the Deputy Minister and the Minister in Social Development, really trying to understand what could be the blockages in the system um, in the interests of our clients. So you can see how the advice strategy moves over into an advocacy strategy very quickly. And while providing information around the individual rights to each of those clients and over radio broadcasts and so on to the broader community, we have really tried to change that system because something is not working. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the road, we think, when it comes to a negotiated, um, uh, an attempt to really work uh, in a conversation towards change. And we have actually lodged papers with the Legal Resources Centre and with a group of, of clients who've been in this position and are taking the department to court because we think a very fundamental right, that to a fair appeal, is, is not being fulfilled. Um, Interestingly, it doesn't just stop there because um, the, the right to an appeal is one thing, but the other thing that's been happening as an attempt to try, I think, and, and smooth out the system of, of disability grants in, in the system um, is that a new definition of disability has been uh, developed and was actually proposed in a new social assistance, in the new social assistance amendment act, amendment bill, sorry, um, and we, are very, very concerned that the way that disability has been defined will exclude tens of thousands of people who are chronically ill. Um, in a country such as South Africa, which experiences extreme poverty and simultaneously where we have one of the very highest rates of HIV and, and other chronic illnesses in the world, there is an inevitable uh, cycle between ill health and poverty. And for us, it is, just makes complete sense that a poverty grant of some kind, income support, should be prioritised to those people with chronic illness so that they can find a way to care for themselves and to not end up disabled. We are currently really arguing that case to give a range of networks and people to make sure that people have the right to health and the right to dignity.